All right, guys, so we're starting on another new project today, big house and garage slab. So we got the house. The house is gonna sit up here, and I'm actually I'm actually backed into where the garage slab is gonna be. We're gonna do that, this slab, the garage slab, after the house. We'll get the house all poured, then we'll come back for the garage. So I'm here to start getting the forms up for the house so they can come in and do their plumbing and all that. They need something to measure off from. All these pipes here are gonna be in the garage. So all my forms will be out on the other side of them. I've got all my corners. This is the this is the plan right here. So this is what I get. I got it in an email too, but <laughs> so this is the house and garage plan I got right here. So I got all my dimensions. Plus, they hired a guy to come in and set all my corners by satellite. So he's got a pin in each corner for me to go by. And that's all the way around the perimeter of the house. So when I get my forms up. I just got to make sure all my corners are setting on those pins and I'll be good and square. And then I just straighten everything and stake it, set it to grade, and then I'm done. And then they come in and do their plumbing. So that's that's where I'm at today. I'm going to get those forms off, start getting some screwed together, start getting some sides up, and we'll get this project started. All right, so I got it all formed up. Probably took me a couple hours. Darren and Luke did show up right at the end to help me set it to grade. So we got it all formed, set to those pins and then straightened it with a string and some stakes and then we got it set to grade now we're just waiting for the plumber we leave this off so they can get a mini a mini excavator in here to dig out for all the plumbing there's a couple bathrooms and kitchen and all that so they're going to dig this all up but they need the forms up in square so they can measure off them and measure off the heights make sure they got the right height on all their plumbing so we we did our part now they got to do theirs and then they're going to lay styrofoam, radiant heat, and then we'll come back and pour it. So, Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for clicking on my channel and watching my video. So today, I want to know what you guys' thoughts are. Was this overkill? And the reason I'm asking is because, you know, the homeowner, who's also one of our best customers, he's a builder, made us pour this 10 inches thick. And that was his thoughts. He wanted to do that. And his reasoning behind was instead, he typically we'll pour a big house slab like this about six inches thick, and then we'll have uh, the deeper edges. So the, the haunt, we call it haunch around the edges. Some of you guys call them grade beams. So anyway, we'll have the thicker edges that are at least a foot thick by maybe two feet wide. And then we'll just pour the thicker edges with a six inch slab. And if we had done that, this would have taken around 45 to 50 yards but instead he just wanted to pour the whole thing 10 inches thick and that saved a little bit of labor on the grading and then it saved it actually did save some labor on laying all the styrofoam and all that but it ended up taking 73 yards so about you know 20 some odd yards more than than it would have taken normally so let me know what you guys think. Was it overkill to do it this way, the whole thing 10 inches thick? Um, do you think he really saved any money by pouring an extra 20, 23, 24, 25 yards in here at about, you know, 140 bucks a yard? So you're talking 3000 to $3,500 in just extra concrete. You guys let me know. Was it overkill or not? But as far as we're concerned, you know, we, I don't really care personally. We'll do whatever he wants. He's... Uh, He's been a really good customer for 25, 30 years, and when he calls, he just wants things done. Doesn't even really ask for a price, just says, hey, Mike, I need this done, come do it, and we come do it for him. And this is for his own personal house. He just sold his house, so he's actually downsizing. This is about a 22, 2300 square foot house slab, and then we still have to do the garage slab and the front patio and the back patio, so he's... He's kind of downsizing here, he says. Um, but anyway, it made for a really good setup and a really good pour. It just, you know, to pour 10 inches thick, a truck, a 10-yard truck doesn't go very far. It might go like 300 square feet. So we'd, we got the pump over there, and then we, we got it in place so we could back two trucks up to it at a time. And that helped speed up. The pouring process a little bit but you can see Darren there holding the end of the hose I mean you don't move very fast when it's 10 inches thick 
We're, uh, we're actually using a high range water reducer in the concrete too so it it flows really nice for us. That helps speed things up a little bit too. You can see how nice that flows there as Luke's screeding that little piece by hand. So the concrete starts out at about a two or three inch slump. Put in the, the high range water reducer and then that allows us to get it up to, you know, seven, seven and a half, even an eight inch slump with the water reducer and it doesn't affect the strength at all. It actually, it's actually stronger concrete than if you just poured with regular water. So we're getting in around those pipes while Darren just keeps pumping. That's all we want Darren to do is just keep pumping, get the concrete on the ground so we can get it screeded and bolt floated. It's about, we started this morning at about 645 and I told the batch man just to send me trucks as fast as you can. We're going to get them dumped out just as fast as you can send them. So that was the plan. We figured we could get this all dumped out in about an hour and a half. The tricky thing was walking in this stuff. They had, you know, they got wire mesh down with radiant heat on top of it. Then there's a few other pipes running on top of that here and there. And then there's a matter rebar in this two foot on center that's up on, it's up on slab bolsters that are about four and a half to five inches tall. So we're trying to dodge all that stuff in there while we're walking in concrete 10 inches thick. I'm using the battery powered screed demon here on this from MBW. This made screeding it really, really nice. Uh, at this slump, this screed here is is no effort at all. So it was a uh, that was probably the easiest part of the whole job was screeding this thing. You can see how nice that works. That thing's really, really quiet too. So you can actually talk to the person behind you as you're screeding versus with a gas powered one. The gas powered ones are pretty noisy. This one weighs about, I'd say, 35, 40 pounds, something like that. It's pretty light. It's one of the lighter ones I've ever used. I've used a lot of them. And I'm just using one of my Milwaukee batteries in there. I got the battery Milwaukee tools. So I can put a 5 amp battery in there. A 5 amp battery will do this whole slab easily and still have some left. If you guys want to check those out, I do have a link for that down in the description of the video. You can go check it out. And if, you, if you're thinking of getting one between a gas powered or a battery powered, you know, if you pour us with slumps, say five, six, seven, kind of like we do, the battery powered one is definitely the way to go, especially on residential stuff. If you pour with a drier slump, let's say, you know, a lot of four inch slumps, maybe five inch slumps and you do a little bit more commercial work and some bigger residential the what I've noticed is the gas powers do have a little more vibration than the battery so if you're if you're at a little bit drier slumps then you might want to go with the gas but for most I mean for everything we do the battery one is just fine you see there goes another truck we're waiting on another one right now that's about we got 40 yards now down on the ground. That big, big section that we're in right now, that figured right in the 50s. So if we could get that with five trucks, then I knew the next section over to the left that you can't see, we that figured just a little over 20. We were sitting in pretty good shape with seven trucks. It was about a... 40 minute ride to the concrete plant so we didn't really want to have to you know we didn't want to run out of concrete and have to wait for balance we knew as soon as the sun comes up this thing's going to start setting up pretty quick i'm going to show you at the end of the video you know the finishing process so the time it took to get this thing finished and sawed we got that all done and it was uh you know early early afternoon by the time we got this thing done Probably the slowest part of the whole process was just pumping the concrete into the into the slab because it's so thick. You see right now we're wondering, okay, where's that fifth truck? You can see me walking there, so I'm dodging the rebar. 
and dodging those big black pipes that are sitting on top of the radiant heat. Definitely don't want to twist an ankle. The guys raking, they just want to keep keep the concrete a little bit higher than grade behind that. That's the key right there to making screeding real easy with that thing. Filling in my footprints. You, you don't want any low spots. And you don't want to be pulling back too much high either. If you get it too high behind that, it'll just vibrate underneath it. And you'll end up with a little bit of a hump. But if they leave that, you know, about an, an inch high maybe or less, then that's just ideal. Alright, so the fifth truck showing up and we're hoping we're hoping that this fifth truck is going to finish this big area and get us into that smaller area you see behind there. Another good thing about the, doing it early in the morning here, the the sun was down behind the trees on, so we were in the shade for most all this pour. That made it a little easier too. When con you pour concrete this thick, it generates quite a bit of heat as it dries, heat of hydration. So we knew being on styrofoam and being this thick that once it starts to set up, it's going to go fast. Even if the temps are in the 60s or 70s, it's probably going to take it's probably going to take less time to power trial this than it did to pour it once it starts going. There's actually quite a few pipes to go around, which, uh, you know, when you're vibra screeding, obviously it's easier if it's just wide open. But we dodged all the pipes pretty pretty much using hand screeds. I got Javi and Jim helping me today, too. You guys, if you've watched many of my videos, you've seen them on some other videos. Javi right there, he works for himself. He's the guy in the orange. So he's he's been doing concrete a long time. He's a great guy to call if we need help. And then Jim, the other guy helping us, he owns his own company. He does mostly foundations. And he hires us to do his floors. So he's another good guy to call when uh you know, if we just need an extra hand. So that truck, as you can see, it did get us just into that into that smaller section there behind us. So we're thinking, okay, the next two trucks, we should be able to finish this and not need another balance truck after that. What we were hoping was that, that that's five trucks right there. That truck number six would already be here, be mixing up and be ready to go by the time we got done. But we kind of had a little bit of a wait for trucks five, six, and then seven. So it finally showed up and we're going to get it dumped right out. We're getting closer to where if we had to, you know, what, what, what we'll end up doing is we'll get, in, we'll get this truck dumped out and then we'll just tell the pump guy that he can take off because we can tailgate that last truck. He can get take off and get washed out because he's got a couple more pumps to do today and, you know, if you can just get him out of here earlier, that makes a better day for him too. As long as we go halfway on this piece, we know we're in good shape. We actually washed up, in between trucks, we washed up that, the Viber screed, since we had plenty of time to do it, and we're just gonna screed this last section by hand. There's not much in the way, so it's gonna be pretty easy just to screed by hand. So what are you guys thinking? Is it is this overkill? It was it too much concrete for just a simple house slab like this? Do you think, or do you think the the owner, the builder, was was perfectly justified in just making it easier on the earthwork guy to have to grade everything just nice and flat, and then we come in and just set our forms down, pin them, set them to grade. 
I mean, it's definitely easier laying that styrofoam down on something that's nice and flat instead of trying to shape it down into a grade beam. We've done plenty of that. But, like I said, he did use about 25 extra yards this way. Yeah, you can see how it made it easy just tailgating that last section. Now the sun's really coming up. It's coming up fast now, so we know that we want to get this in. Hopefully we'll have a few minutes just to take a break before we got to stop power trialing. It was a little trickier trying to kick screed in this concrete that was 10 inches thick. I'm trying to dodge that rebar that's up in the up in the slab about four and a half, five inches. So Javi's gonna finish up bow floating. We're gonna get all the tools washed up, and then I'm gonna show you, you know, how we got this thing power trialed. And you'll get to see the whole process, although I did speed it up, so it's not going to take very long. So here we are. We're about, this was about an hour after the pour. You can see the shade right on the very first pot that we started. And Darren's kind of floating everything else. And it was actually right where we first started was the last piece that he, he hit. So that, that actually set up the slowest. We're, he's just using that MBW 36 inch high torque trowel that I've seen you've seen on some of my other videos if you've watched any of those So Darren got it hit a couple times and then it started drying really fast. So Luke pulled out the other power trowel And we was pretty much just non-stop from the time we started There was one guy on it most the whole time and then when we did get a break we, we started stripping the forms right off and because you know the styrofoam stayed right on the edges so we got everything all stripped loaded and we was out of there so we're laying out the saw joint saw joints now and that's just to help control any cracks we'll get this thing sawed and then that's it so let me know down in the comments overkill or not again guys thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one